His shade. Want to say welcome to the 40, 43rd annual Muscogee Creek Nation Festival Living Legends. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here with us in this celebration at this time. Gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, to bring a welcome, Principal Chief James R. Floyd. Please give him a round of applause as he makes his way. Following that, we'll have an invocation. everyone. It's a pleasure to be up here this afternoon and be a part of the ceremony. Um, it's really a great time and um, just want to say that you know I think the living legends this year um, really represent I think the heart of the Muscogee people and um, it's with you know great pleasure that um, we have this evening that we can um, recognize each one of you this, uh, today. Um, it was hard. We had a lot of people that submitted entries this year and um, so we really worked hard and we looked at the achievements that each one of the four individuals made not only to the Muscogee Nation but to the nation as a whole whether it be within the United States or internationally the things that they have done so we're very proud of each one of you and and we hope that all of you enjoy the evening that we have in store for you here for during this time so uh, without um, any further words I think um, Miss Muscogee Nation uh, Aunt Miss Amberly Proctor is going to give the invocation you may be seated. Again, at this time, it's a, it's a great privilege to be stand before you. My name is Jabon Gouge, and uh, always a privilege to stand before great people. Uh, for our entertainment pleasure, I do I did invite a gentleman, a Muskogee citizen, Mr. John Tim John Timothy, to come and give us uh, a number, and uh, if he would come and and um, bless us with the number and he will come back as we are eating. And so, would you please give a round of applause to Mr. John Timothy. Living Legends was created by Principal Chief A.D. Ellis in 2005. The qualification to be selected as a living legend must be an enrolled Muscogee Creek citizen, must be at least 55 years of age, must have brought recognition and or made outstanding contributions to the quality of life and development of the Muscogee Creek Nation on a local, national, international level. All industries considered, including but not limited to ceremonial religious leaders, arts, public affairs, business professional, education, and voluntary service. So at this time, I would like to invite Principal Chief James Floyd, as well as Second Chief Lewis Hicks to come as we make the presentations to our 2017 Living Legends. Let's give them a round of applause as they make their way, please. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be able to read the summaries of the work of these individuals who we're about to recognize and all the things that they have done um, in initiating, leading, supporting, being involved with you know, governments and everything else. And so, um, bear with me if I, as I read these. I left my glasses at home, so um, <laughs> fortunately I know a little bit about some of these individuals and, and that helps. Our first person to be recognized this afternoon is Frito Chubby Anderson. 
Peter Chubby Anderson has dedicated his life to investing in the lives of others. His humanitarian and advocacy work focused on Muskogee citizens' re-entry into society. Mr. Anderson is a graduate of Spring Hill High School in Faro, Oklahoma. He attended Bacon College where he, where he competed on the boxing team and then later transferred to Northeastern State University. It was at this turning point in his life that he became devoted to helping our Muskogee people. From 1974 to 1978, Chubby volunteered his time as a trainer for the McAllister State Penitentiary Boxing Team, which started his relationship with the Oklahoma Department of Corrections. During this time, he established a, rep, uh, a respected reputation with the correction, correctional institutions, wardens, judges, and the parole board. In 1975, Anderson began his 39 years of service to the Muskogee Creek Nation as a job developer for the CETA program, which later became the JTPA program, he recognized the need to provide support for incarcerated tribal citizens and, and the needs of their families by attending parole hearings and personally driving family members for visits. He coordinated with local schools within the Muskogee Creek Nation boundaries to, to attend speak out sessions at various correctional institutions impacting thousands of young people. In the early 2000s, the nation established the reintegration program. The tribe's reintegration program works with tribal citizens before and after they leave incarceration, paying attention to everything from jobs and housing to counseling and spiritual needs. What started out as, an, as a need recognized by Mr. Anderson evolved into a fully funded large-scale reintegration program providing the support our tribal citizens need in re-entering society. And I might add that our program is probably the best one in the United States thanks to your work. The Oklahoma Department of Corrections chose him as Volunteer of the Year in 1999. Mr. Anderson was named as a 2012 AARP Oklahoma Indian honoree. In recognition of Frito Chubby Anderson's contributions and devotions made to improve the lives of Muskogee citizens, he is our living legend. Our next distinguished um, living legend this afternoon is Ms. Joreen Coker. Joreen Coker has dedicated her life as an activist for the rights and protection of the Muskogee people. She has been a lifelong mentor, benefactor, and supporter of several organizations that emphasize public service, education, achievement, and en environmental protection. Ms. Coker is a 1941 graduate of Preston High School and attended Haskell Institute. In 1944, she enlisted in the United States Navy during World War II and was stationed in Hawaii at Pearl Harbor. After serving two years for her country, she was honorably discharged. She returned to school and graduated with a teaching degree from East Central University. She taught at Seneca Boarding School, then went home to teach at Preston Public Schools. In 1954, she began her career with the, the Okmulgee Agency of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. She retired as a realty officer after devoting 29 years of service to Indian tribes and citizens of this area. After retiring, Ms. Coker wanted to get involved in public service. She was co-founder of the Committee of Austin for whose purpose was to bring acknowledgement and honor to our Muskogee veterans. This committee was instrumental in planning and raising funds for the First Creek Veterans Monument located at the northwest corner of the Muskogee Creek Nation complex. Joreen then moved her focus to environmental protection and animal rights. As an environmental activist, she played a considerable role in the fight against the state of Texas buying Oklahoma water. The United States Supreme Court ruled in favor of Oklahoma, stating that Oklahoma laws to block Texas water claims were valid. The Muskogee Women's Leadership Organization named her the 2015 Elder of the Year. In a recent interview, 
Ms. Coker said, I love my tribe. We had invaders that came to us, we accommodate, accommodated them, and then they tried to kill us, but we are still here. In recognition of Joanne Coker's activism and advocacy for veterans, education, and environmental issues, she is a living legend. I'm honored to be uh, listed with the people that are on the agenda tonight. But one thing I learned when I was in the Navy is that if you believe in something, you've got to speak out. And so after I retired from working and came back into private life, I took on my part in the world as to educate Istihetkis that we Stajadis are still here and that we have <laughs> and that we have always shared what we know with anybody and everybody that wants to listen. So, anyway, thank you and I appreciate I the honor that I've been given. Thank you very much. Our third living legend representative um, honoree tonight is Ramona J. Mason. Ramona Mason has spent most of her life educating the world on American Indian traditions. Fluent in Muskogee, both speaking and writing, she is a businesswoman, professional designer of Muskogee clothing, a visual artist, lecturer, historian, and education consultant. Ms. Mason is a graduate of Tulsa Will Rogers High School and the University of Tulsa, earning a bachelor's of science degree in arts education. She has been a teacher, a state of Oklahoma artist in residence, an educational specialist with the U.S. Department of Education's Indian Education Program, and was designated as a goodwill ambassador by the state of Oklahoma. Ramona has been involved in the Tulsa Metropolitan Community for many years, beginning with a position of board member and chair of the Tulsa Indian Council. Because of her knowledge of the Muskogee history and culture, she was an advisor to the University of, Tul uh, University of Tulsa's American Indian Student Association and has served as an advisor to the Indian Students Group at other universities and colleges. She has served as school board chair for the Ufala Dormitory. She retired in 2017 from the Board of Regents for the College of the Muskogee Nation after serving as chair for 12 years and after the College of the Muskogee Nation was awarded accreditation for the high, from the Higher Learning Commission. The Muskogee Women's Leadership Organization chose Ms. Mason as Indian Woman of the Year in 2011. She was given the Renard Strickland Education Award by the Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission in 2006. The Oklahoma Federation of Indian Women nominated her Woman of the Year in 2003. She was also given the Native American Student Association Outstanding Alumnus Award during the Multicultural Awards Banquet at the University of Tulsa in 1990. Hermona has traveled to Europe Singapore, Mexico, Canada, and across the United States, making presentations and sharing her knowledge. She was once asked why she travels the world doing the presentations in tribal dress. Her response is, we do presentations to get rid of the stereotypes. Prejudices and ignorance are all still alive. In recognition of Ramona J. Mason's continued work, research, dedication to the Muskogee people, and preservation of our culture, she is also a living legend. And we welcome her to the stage. Meadow Chiquetas, those of you who voted and nominated Meadow, 
Um, he said to me, would you like to say something? Well, if there's a microphone, <clears throat> I'll say something. Uh, you know, um, when he was reading that about me and um, was the comment I made about uh, uh, prejudice and the lack of knowledge about the Native people um, made me think of when my husband Archie and I uh, made presentations at schools. Um, I'd let him talk because if you know Archie, he's got braids and people are always saying, are you Native American? And he goes, how can you tell, you know? And then I would talk and I would say, um, my tribe is matriarchal and at my house, the women are the boss. And so um, he would say, they're patriarchal and at my house, the men are the boss. So the students would most always say, well, at your house, who's the boss then? And we'd both say, I am. But <laughs> we've got to have uh, some laughter, and we've got to have a um, uh, sense of humor being Native. Because yes, I Momen Hisagatamizi Bobagat. Mo Madoka get their doors. Omalga Fulat got Mo Madoka. Our next honoree is um, Mr. A.D. Ellis. A.D. Ellis has devoted more than 20 years advocating for Muscogee Creek people. He has served as National Council Representative, Second Chief. Principal Chief, Tribal Liaison, and member of the Armed Forces, and an author. Mr. Ellis graduated from Twin Hills High School and attended Tulsa Business College. Later, he enlisted in the United States Air Force and then the Oklahoma Natural, National Guard. After retiring from International Brotherhood of Teamsters Union in 1989, he entered tribal politics. While serving as Principal Chief, he was appointed to serve a three-year term on the, ter on the Oklahoma Indian Affairs Commission by Governor Brad Henry. Some of, the, some of Mr. Ellis' significant accomplishments during his administration as Principal Chief include the building of the Muscogee Dome, on which we are presently sitting, the Light Horse Building, Attorney General Building, the completion of the River Spirit Casino, the establishment of the College of the Muscogee Nation, the Veterans Affairs Department, the Kuwaita Clinic, elderly housing, the Southern Regional Office, the Muscogee Transit System, and the purchase of the historic Creek Council House. As Principal Chief, Chief Ellis promoted governmental transparency and maintained an open door policy for all citizens. He made crucial decisions to safeguard the tribe's stability and ensure compliance with regulations by consolidating gaming revenue from all casinos to the tribal treasury. He increased minimum wage for tribal employees to $10 an hour. Chief Ellis has worked with the federal and state governments to secure Johnson O'Malley funds for Johnson O'Malley programs across the United States. Chief Ellis co-authored a book titled the People's Warrior, published in 2014. He said, I want the Creek citizens to know about the battles, corruption, and who the troublemakers are so they can choose their future leaders wisely. Well said. <laughs> in recognition of Chief Ellis's, Chief A.D. Ellis's significant contributions and dedication to the Muscogee Nation and to the Muscogee people, he is a living legend. Please come, welcome to the stage.
Yes, I'd like to say a few things. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize my family over at this table here. Mike Flood and Judge Moore is part of the family too. Uh, and Chubby Anderson, I went to Swan Hills High School and played basketball and he went to Pharaoh. And when we headed for Pharaoh to play them, the coach always says, be careful because Chubby's gonna start a fight. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> uh, I used to go with him down the prison at McAllister and we'd walk up and down the hallways, even death row. You'd hear people hollering, hey Chubby, hey Chubby. He was well known and done some great good. Uh, in 2004, I believe it was, uh, Chief Chad Smith at the Cherokee Nation invited my wife Gail and I to uh, their national day in September and their state of the nation. And they presented three or four people they call national treasures. And they were gifted in some areas, politics or art or whatever, and they were designated national treasures of the Cherokee Nation. So I told my wife, we need to do something like that. I came home and got with my staff and we decided to start one and we call it the Living Legends because I remembered Chief Claude Cox's name on the driveway out here and he passed away before that happened. Also Bob Arrington's name on the rodeo grounds. Bob passed away and never saw it. So by creating the Living Legends, these people get to enjoy the sin in their name and get to enjoy the success that they've had. So I hope, uh, hope that is the way it keeps going. I'll thank Chief Floyd for bringing this program back. Thank you. Mano, I just have to say, Chief Ellis, I, I thank you for the opportunity for allowing me to still be here, I guess. So he got me uh, to this place as pr uh, principal chief, and I thank him for the opportunity. So, Mado. Um, at this time, what we want to do is uh, we would like, I know everyone has already sat down, but if we can, we'll move this aside and we'd like to have a group photo of all the living legends uh, here up on top. So if we could have.